Hello and welcome to Ogmore by Sea Church's Reading the Bible Together. My name is Dom and it's great that you can join me on this adventure together as we read through the whole Bible. We're reading through the book of Hebrews during the month of July. In fact, we've already read through the whole book and now we're going through it again at a slower pace so that we can look up the Old Testament references alluded to in the letter and we can look at those Old Testament passages in their context because there is so much uh, to fill out and to explain even more. So let's pray and then we're going to dive into chapter 3 and hopefully this is going to be a shorter video than the others because there's only a couple of Old Testament passages referred to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word from Genesis to Revelation, and we thank you that it tells us of your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we come in his name, and we humbly ask that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, let me put this on screen so that you can see where I'm reading from. Now, is it this one? Yes. There we go. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 3. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your eyes on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honour than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honour than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Then we come to our first reference. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. So the point of this is that the people who are being who are reading this or hearing this for the first time, they were Christians coming from a Jewish background. And they had a deep reverence for Moses. They'd be like, right, of course, we listen to Moses. But so often in the New Testament, we're told, if you believe Moses, you would trust in Jesus because Moses wrote of Jesus. You can look at John chapter 5, for instance. But here, the same point is that Moses was the servant in God's house, but Jesus, the son over God's house, he is the builder of God's house, the church. And the passage referred to here in verse 5 of chapter 3 of Hebrews is from Numbers chapter 12. So here in, chap in verse 5 it says Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house. So if we jump to Numbers chapter 12, let's read. Miriam and Aaron, so Miriam and Aaron were the sister and brother respectively of Moses. They began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked. Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then Moses came down, sorry, then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud so this is the angel of the Lord, the Lord himself, the pre-incarnate son of God who went before his people in the pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. So this one came down from that pillar of cloud here at the tent of meeting to speak with Moses, Miriam and Aaron. He stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly, not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Sometimes children's Bibles which retell the stories of the Old Testament or videos which explain the stories. They have God speaking in the Old Testament in some disembodied voice with a, a light beaming on the person. No, Moses spoke face to face with Jesus, the, the angel of the Lord, the one sent from God who is God. 
It wasn't something that could be portrayed as a hallucination. No, it was meeting the very essence of reality, the logos of the universe, Jesus. Uh, verse 9 says, the anger of the Lord burned against them and he left them. And we'll leave it there. But it's interesting, isn't it, how this is one instance among actually quite a number where God's people rebelled against God's appointed leaders. So God chose Moses to bring his message to his people and to Pharaoh. And he chose Aaron to be the high priest. But people grumbled. And here Miriam and Aaron are grumbling about Moses and his unique role speaking to Jesus face to face like a friend. And that is a very interesting point when we go back to Hebrews chapter 3, because ironically, what are the Jewish Christians tempted to do? They're tempted to forsake Jesus to go back to Moses. In other words, they are leaving God's appointed leader, who is far better than Moses, uh, far, far in a category all of his own. He is the builder of the house, he is the son over the house, and Moses was a servant of his house, that is Jesus's house. So that is a very useful passage for us to look up, but let's keep on reading from verse 7. So as the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. As has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. So Psalm 95 is the place for us to go. It is quoted and then re-emphasized in that passage. Psalm 95 says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountains, mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day of Ma at Massa in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For forty years I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And I think the writer of the Hebrews probably had Psalm 95 open before him as he wrote the letter. Because other than the beautiful and simple point of saying that Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is Yahweh, the God of Israel, uh, the message is very, very similar. How the Lord Jesus is greater than everything and anyone else, and we are called to come before him and worship him. 
He is the one who's made us and he is the shepherd who cares for our souls. And we need to listen to him. Today, we need to listen to him. Where all the other voices surround us and call for our attention, we need to listen to Jesus' voice, the voice that, of one who loves us infinitely. And we are given a warning about not hardening our hearts. Uh, this is a reference where it says quarrelling and it means testing. I haven't got the, the passages there to look up. Maybe we'll do that another day. Um, but these, uh, this point in Israel's history when they rebelled, they grumbled and they wanted to go back to Egypt or wish they'd died in Egypt rather than to perish in the wilderness. They didn't believe that God had their, their good in his heart. They thought that something dodgy was going on. They didn't trust him. And it is tragic when they saw all that God did in rescuing them out of slavery, leading them through the Red Sea, raining down bread of angels in the wilderness, making the wilderness like an oasis, giving them his law, defeating armies before them, so many so many things god is good and he is in control we can trust him hear his voice and trust him today right i said it'll be a shorter one i'm gonna leave it there for now god bless